الحمد لله غافل الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي الطول لا إله إلا هو إليه المصير أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له بيده الخلق والأمر وإليه المرجع والمصير كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه له الحكم وإليه ترجعون وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كالنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن دعا بدعوته واهتدى بهديه واتبع سنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الأحباب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها الأحباب when we talk about unity النعمان بن بشير رضي الله عنهما قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وتعاطفهم كمثل الجسد الواحد نعمان بن بشير رضي الله عنهما stated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم says that the believers in their mutual kindness the believers are those that are kind to one another they are compassionate and they have sympathy to each other and they are just like one body if a part of that body is hurt then the entire ummah feels the same as well and this is the example of the ummah the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also reminds us اِفْتَرَقَتِ الْيَهُودِ عِهْدَ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةِ وَإِفْتَرَقَتِ النَّصَارَ اِثْنَتَيْنَ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةِ وَسَتَخْتَلِفُ أُمَّتِي ثَلَاثَ وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةِ كُلُّهَا فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا وَاحِدِ The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that those who follow Judaism they will separate into 71 different sects the Christians will separate into 72 sects and the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will separate into 73 sects. All of them will enter into hellfire except for one. The companions, they asked, Man hum ya Rasulullah? Who is going to be that same sect? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ma ana alayhi al-yawm wa ashabi? Those who follow me and my companions. We find there's a lot of disunity. We find a lot of separation between the ummah. We find even when you tell children to come to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, Mom, why are you taking me there? Dad, why are you taking me there? The Imam of the Masjid is not even united with his own administration. Why are you taking me there? And this is indeed a downfall of the Ummah and it's really sad, really sad to say because if the younger generation feels this way then subhanAllah our foundations are messed up. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold fast onto the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not be disunited. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَذْكُرُوا And remember the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We find each and every single day masajids without people, with just only four walls. Because there's a lot of ikhtilaf, there's a lot of people complaining about each other. What is the point of having a mosque with only four walls with no people? Soon we're going to find 50 years down the road, maybe people just coming to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps just a janitor coming, or one or two people coming. That is the sad reality until we change. 
My brothers and sisters, ikhtilaf, when we look at mas'ala, we find the scholars, the and the likes, the great scholars, Abani, when they had a difference of opinion in a mas'ala, they would not divide amongst each others. But subhanAllah, they still loved each other. They would come to a common ground. When people have differences of, of opinion in a mas'ala, you find these people, they separate and they run away from each other. They start calling each other names. They're not welcoming of each other. It's my group, my three guys of the administration of the masjid against the whole community. And this is very dangerous, very dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَهُ فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and obey Allah and His Messenger and do not dispute وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا what's going to happen فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ You're going to be weak and weak and weak to the point where you're going to be so fragile. Wind could take you just like that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasbiru, be patient in terms of all these calamities and problems. In Allah Allah is with those that are patient. Again, we find and we ask ourselves, why is there so much disunity within our community? The word community comes from unity, and when there's no unity, there is no community. SubhanAllah, my brothers and sisters, we find it is because of the hearts. Many of the people, their hearts have diseases. Many of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in charge, He is testing them. Marakis, with these big centers that are so beautiful, Allah is testing them. And you find it within their hearts, they have diseases. Kalla, no. بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ No, but it is the heart that has a disease within it. And when a heart has a disease, it can never be cured. We find some people, subhanAllah, dividing upon a simple mas'ala. Not only that, at the same time, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he used to walk in the streets of Medina and he had concern for his community, concern for his people. As the Imam, as the one that led an entire nation, led an entire Ummah. This middle of the night, at night, used to walk in the streets of Medina asking, who needs help? Who needs support? These are the people that we are supposed to go back to and learn from instead of dividing. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمن ولا تؤمن حتى تحابوا أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ أَفْشُ سَلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in an authentic hadith in what was collected in Sahih Muslim. Abu Huray radiallahu anhu says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لَا تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا That you will not enter into paradise until you believe. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا And you have not believed until you love one another. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ Shall I tell you something? إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ If you do, you will love one another. أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Spread the salams amongst you. When was the last time you spread the salam to your next door neighbor? When was the last time you spread the salam to your next fellow Muslim that comes to the same masjid as you? Why? It is because they have a disease within their hearts. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, says that you will not until you believe and you have not believed until until you love one another. So if you want to go to Jannah, then you gotta love your Muslim brother. If you have hatred, then subhanAllah, it becomes the downfall of an ummah, it becomes the downfall of a community. We can no longer prosper, we can no longer go forward because this community, subhanAllah, you would find they are people that have diseases within their hearts. Those that think that the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belong to them and nobody else. If you don't have the same understanding as me, if you are not a part of this clique. If you do not follow our way, then that is it, you're gone. SubhanAllah, this is the way that majority of us think today. 
Is this the right way? Absolutely not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, the believers are brothers. When, and make reconciliation between them. So if anything happens, you make reconciliation between them. You do not be a cheerleader and go for one side. Why? Because you want to get a name out of it. Why? Because you want to get a title out of it. But you do. You make reconciliation between your brothers. Only if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're God conscious. Only if you're a person that has no disease within their hearts. My brothers and sisters, this heart, if it's not clean, you can never go forward in life. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَى إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَتْ جَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after a very long hadith, he tells us, that's وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَى Within the body, there is a morsel of flesh. If it is pure, then the whole heart is pure. If it is filthy and dirty, then comes the whole body. The heart becomes filthy and dirty. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبُ And this is the heart. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we find the first place that he built. When he wanted to put together a community, was a masjid and he built Quba. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they made Hijrah from Mecca to Medina. Upon understanding that, the masajids belong to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and nobody else. Nobody can say that, hey, I own this place or even behave in such a manner, whether you are an admin or whether you're someone in charge. Why? Because Allah speaks to you and He says, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Proclaim the houses of Allah only for Him and nobody else. By understanding this, so do not invoke with Allah anybody. In Surah Jinn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that. Now, we have to be accepting of community. In general, if we want to prosper. And the reason why is because when we find a young generation, not coming to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they feel within their hearts that they're going to be judged. They feel within their hearts that if I come to the masajid, I do not feel as, as, as if I'm a part of this community. Let me tell you something. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at one point in time leading an entire expedition of 1,000 men, he chose none other than Usama bin Zayd at the age of 17 to 19 years of age. When some of the elders saw this, they became confused and they said, why would you choose a young man at this age? How is he going to lead us? They started complaining. Like at times, many of the elders start complaining when youth come to the masajids and they want to be a part of it and they want to lead a youth, you know, part, a part of the organization of the masjid. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَإِنَّهُ أَصْبَرَكُمْ عَلَى الْجُوعِ For verily, he can take starvation more than anybody. He can take hunger more than anybody. And he led an entire expedition of 1,000 men, Usama bin Zayd. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose him. If we go back in time, this is how they used to act. But today, oh, he's just a young guy. Oh, she's just a young sister. They can't do anything for our community. And then what do they do? They do other stuff for other communities. They put their strength, their hard work, their abilities, their brain, their brain power, everything in other communities. While the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are supposed to open youth centers. Why do we feel scared when youth are doing so much for our communities? Why is that? Because there's a disease in the heart. And as long as that disease is still present in the heart, that person will never move forward. It's basically, I want to say, I can lead this community, I can do everything, and subhanAllah, this is very dangerous, especially when it comes to I, I, I. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, I'm going to give you another example of a young man that was chosen, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, at the age of 17 to 19 years of age. In the same shura council as Ali radiallahu anhu, in the same shura council as Abdurrahman bin Auf, and subhanAllah, he chose him 17 to 19 years of age to be a part of the gathering. 
Today, if you bring a 17, 19 years of age, a part of the gathering of the masjid, they would feel so happy. They would feel a sense of belonging. And that is what we need to do. Little kids that are studying the Quran in the houses of Allah, seniors that are coming to the house of Allah to study, we have to provide services for them, not take them away from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a very stern warning to those that chase community members away from the house of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّا مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِي هَسْمُهُ وَسَعَ فِي خَرَابِهَا أُولَئِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيُ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks and gives a stern warning to these people. And he says, who is more of a valim, who is more unjust than the one that chases people away from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they chase people away from mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. And they strive for destruction. Such in this world, Allah will disgrace them. And in the hereafter, in the akhirah, they're going to get an adab that is severe in punishments. Is this the way we want to live? Is this the way we want to behave? Especially when life is short and Allah has given you a responsibility with these marakis. Invite the young people, invite the seniors, invite those that cannot come to the masajid, provide services for them, pick them up from their houses, have a van, do things that a community is supposed to do. But when the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are empty and nobody comes to pray, then, and you chase everyone away and it's you against your little clique against everybody who is more of a wrongdoer than the one who chases people away from the house of Allah and from Allah's name to be mentioned. How dare you tell someone to leave the house of Allah? How dare you? That came to mention Allah, that came to pray for the sake of Allah. Who are you? Fir'aun, he used to tell people, فَقَالْ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى Verily, I am your Lord and you worship me. We haven't got to, us to that stage. But subhanAllah, evil starts bits by bits by bits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who disbelieve in the wrongdoers. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا قَالُوا بَلَى وَلَكِنْ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ الْعَذَابِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who disbelieve will be driven into hell in groups until when they reach its gates and the gates of hell will be open and they will be told, did there not come to you a messenger from yourselves reciting my verses to you, verses of your Lord, and of you uh, and of the meeting with Allah on the day of yours, on the day of judgment, and they will say yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, but the word of the punishments of those of the disbelievers on that day will have no effect. The day that everyone will gather, a community is all about unity. And subhanAllah, when Allah has given you a responsibility like this, then you must fulfill that responsibility. Welcome youth, welcome the elders, welcome the young ones, smile for them. Smile, it's charity. Smiling is a form of charity as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. And in order to prosper, the only way we could do it is by holding hands and uniting upon the Quran, the Sunnah, and the understanding of the companions. كما أمرنا سبحانه في تنزيله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا برحمتك واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت 
اللهم إننا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إننا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل وأعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل اللهم بارك في أوقاتنا اللهم بارك في بيوتنا اللهم بارك في أزواجنا وذرياتنا وأولادنا يا أرحم الراحمين